Shalom, Yasharala Shalom. This is Ak Kadash Alahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I like to say Ka Hala, Abanawa, Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahawashai, Hamashiak, Amanawal, Barakata. Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty. And Yahawashai being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And I have a very important lesson to go over today, man, you know, for the edification of the flock, for brothers and sisters that are, you know, having a strong battle against a flesh, you know, and, and when you do fall short of the glory, you know, you feel convicted, you know, you feel remorseful, you have that contrite heart, unlike you know, your average person that commit a transgression against the most high, they don't they don't feel a damn thing. Right? So there's a difference um for somebody that's fighting for their laws and their lives versus somebody that's fighting against the most high to stay in the world. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go into a very important topic, you know, pertaining to getting your sins blotted out, man. Cause it's very imperative that you understand that you must need to get your sins blotted out, right? Get your sins blotted out. Don't get your name blotted out the book of life, man. You got to confess your faults. You got to acknowledge your faults and you got to do things. You got to do works to get your sins blotted out. And one way to get your sins blotted out is to do alms, all right? Giving alms cover of multitude of sins man go feed the needy whether it be you giving them money or you giving them food man all right go feed the needy um let's get the definition of the word alms uh one of the definition of alms is something such as money or food given freely to relieve the poor distributing alms to the needy uh, two, uh, archaeoc or charity, right? So freely relieving the poor by giving them money or food, that's a way to cover a multitude of sins, man, right? Because when you lend to the poor, it's, it's as if you're lending to the most high. Matter of fact, let me get that. Let's go to the book of, I'm going to start off with the book of Proverbs the 19th chapter and the 17th verse. The book of Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 17 and it reads, He that hath pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord Yahweh, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Right? So when you have pity on the poor, you have sympathy and remorse for the poor and you lend it unto the poor, meaning you give them alms, charity, Right. You feed them. You go out your way to to relieve them from their oppression or depression or their um, homelessness for that for that second. Right. You show them that the most high exists, man. And when you do that, you lend unto the most high. All right. So take that into consideration. Right. He that have pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, Yahweh. And that which he have given, he will pay him again. You're going to get it again and in return. Not saying that you should look for it in return because you should be doing it out the kindness of your heart. You know, but the most High going to bless you, man. He's going to give it back to you. Right. It's not in vain. Right. Let's go to the book of Tobit in the Apocrypha. The fourth chapter. And let's start at the. Let's start at the fifth verse, right? The book of Tobit, chapter four and verse five, and it reads, My son, be mindful of the Lord our God all thy days, and let not thy will be set to sin or to transgress his commandments. Do uprightly all thy life long and follow not the ways of unrighteousness. So Tobit was a man that feared the Most High, and he's telling his son Tobias, you know, um, keep the commandments, man. Don't transgress. Don't let the, your will be to transgress the laws of God like these Christians, man. 
right? Do uprightly all thy life long. Your whole entire life, do right, right? You do, you do the right thing, the next right thing will continue to happen for you, right? And follow not the ways of the unrighteousness. So like in follow not the ways of unrighteousness, and that goes into uh, not following the ways of the heathens, because everything the heathens do are is unrighteous. So like you, everything the heathens do is unrighteous. So don't follow the ways of the heathens, man, or don't follow the ways of the two thirds, right? Because the, their ways are unrighteousness. Verse six: For if thou deal truly, thy doings shall prosperly succeed to thee. And to do all them that live justly, right? So if you do right and you deal truly, everything you do is going to prosper, right? Everything you do, everything you touch is going to prosper if you keep the commandments, right? Verse 7, and this is the point. Give alms of thy substance. And when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious, Neither turn thy face from any poor, and the face of the Most High shall not be turned away from thee. Right? So give alms of thy substance. Whatever the Most High done blessed you with, whether you have a good job, you got a roof over your head, you got a, 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 a fridge full of food, right? Give alms of thy substance, man. Right? Break a piece off, break, break a piece off of your blessing and go bless the poor, man. Basically is what it's saying. And when you do give alms, right, don't let your eye be envious. Don't be like, oh, I shouldn't do this or I really don't got enough to give. Oh, why is this people? Why is these people poor? Why are they begging me? Why they got their hands out begging me for stuff? No, don't don't let your eye be envious, man. And don't turn your face from any poor man. Anybody that's poor, don't turn your face from them. Right. Because if you do that, the most high going to turn his face from you when you're in need. Right. When you need a blessing, when you need a miracle to happen, the most High going to turn his face because look how you treated the poor. Right. It say in the face of the most high shall not be turned away from thee. So if you have a pure heart. Right. If you have a, a sympathetic heart. Right. Or you have empathy on the poor hey, and you lend to the poor and you give alms to the poor. Hey, that's like you lend into the Most High, and the Most High not going to turn his face from you when you need something, right? Verse number eight, if thou has abundance, give alms accordingly. Give give according to what you have, right? If, if you have a lot of money, give a lot of alms. If you have a little bit of money, give a little bit of alms. Give what you can, right? If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little, right? So don't fear to give what you think you don't got, right? If you got a little portion of something to give, give that little portion, man, right? Um, verse eight from the top. If thou has abundance, give alms accordingly. If thou has but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little, right? If you got $10 and you see somebody out there need, begging for spare change, if all you have is $10, hey man, give them, Give them a couple dollars. You know, it ain't going to hurt you. you. You down to eight dollars now. You know, that's 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 not that much of a difference from 10. Right. Verse nine. If thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. Right. Because when you do that, you lay up a good treasure for thy for the uh, for thyself against the day of necessity. So when you in need of something and you don't have it and you don't gave arms to somebody. Right. Out of, out of a pure heart. Right. You done gave alms. So now a couple weeks later, a month later, a few months later, you're, you're in need of something. Right. You done stored up a good treasure already. So what you gave out, you're going to receive it back. So there's no need to doubt, worry or panic because you're going to receive um, a good treasure because you done laid up a good treasure. Right. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. Verse 10, because that alms do deliver from death. Right? Alms do deliver from death. And suffereth not to come into darkness. So by you having that pure heart, giving alms charity, 
right, to the poor, right, that is going to deliver you from death, man. That's going to deliver you from sin. Verse 11, for alms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the most high. Right. So you're not doing it for man. You're doing it for the most high. You're not doing it just to receive a blessing. You're really doing it because the most high requires it of you. And he said that's part of your works, man. That's how you get your sins blotted out. And, and we know we laid up with a bunch of sin, man. We, we was wicked as hell in the world. And now that we come we come into this truth, we're fighting off that old man, that wickedness that we that, that we used to be in the world. And, and we all ain't got it together yet. And let's be honest, man. Everybody ain't got it together yet. We still fighting certain demons, man. And sometimes we lose battles. That's just what it is, man. But the war, we're going to win the war, but sometimes we lose battles. And when you lose those battles, it's, it's a good thing for you to give to the poor, man. Right? So you can get those sins blotted out. For alms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. That's a good gift. Giving alms, feeding the poor, donating clothes, feeding, feeding the poor, man, making sandwiches, right? Uh, buying them food, you know, buying them pizza, lawful, lawful foods. Don't don't go out here feeding the poor abominations, man. Don't be out here giving them pork sausages and pork ribs to eat because now you putting them in sin. Right. Even though they don't give a damn what it is because they hungry, but still keep everything lawful when dealing with the poor, man. Right. Uh, let's jump to let's jump to the 12th chapter of Tobit. Tobit chapter 12. And let's start at the eighth verse. All right. Tobit chapter 12 and verse eight. And it reads. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. Right. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. Right. So if you got uh, if you make if you making an honest living, you got a good job. Right. And you, you got a little, you know, Esau paying us crumbs at the work at the workplace. Right. But a little with righteousness, you got that job. You holding down your household. You providing for your family. Right. You keeping the commandments. Right. That's that's better than having much with unrighteousness. It's better than being a nigga that's pimping on 10 women. Right. Making 10 bands a day. Right. But he's in the lifestyle of wickedness. You you living better than that man. You living better than than P. Diddy, who done sold his soul for the bag. Right. Because you're not worried about all these allegations being brought up on you. Uh, human trafficking. Right. Pedophilia. Right. You're, you're better than them. Even though you have a, a, a plain job. Right. Even though you stay in a condominium, two bedroom, three bedroom condominium. Right. You're better than somebody that got much but is living wickedly. Right. It say a little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. So it's better to give charity to the poor than to save up riches, right? It's better to uh, dis distribute your earnings to the poor, man, right? Because they putting it to use. You're putting it to use. Verse number nine, for, al for alms doeth deliver from death and shall purge away all sins. And that's the point, man. Right. Arms do deliver from death and shall purge away all transgressions of the law. Those that exercise arms in righteousness shall be filled with life. So you got to exercise arms. It ain't something you do once in a blue moon, man. This this got to be a consistent thing, if not a weekly thing, a, a monthly thing, man. Right. You should always be in the spirit of, of feeding the poor or giving to the poor. Right. Verse 10. But they that sin are enemies to their own life. 
So when you transgress the laws of the Most High, you you are you are uh, enemy to your own life, man. That's why they say sometimes your biggest enemy is the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror because you're sinning against the Most High, and that makes you an enemy to your own life, man. Because there's judgments for transgressing the laws of God. That's just what it is, right? So you have to renew your mind on a daily basis. Stay in this word, right? Edify your brothers and sisters. Read, man. Read read a few chapters every day, right? If not, whole books, man, right? You you throw the audio book on for um, Genesis, man. It's, it's like two hours and 30 minutes. Listen to that, man. You, you could sit up and watch movies all day. You could sit up and indulge in folly all day long. But when it comes to dedicating time to the most high, niggas just ain't able, man. Because they don't want to be able. Right? Because they're enemies to their own life. You know what I'm saying? You got to renew your mind. Come into the knowledge of the truth. Right? Go precept upon precept. Really put the pieces of the puzzle together and figure this thing out, man. Because the pastor not going to tell you, the pastor is not going to tell you how to deliver your soul from death. It's not going to tell you how to cover a multitude of sins. He's not going to tell you how to co how to cover cover a multitude of sins on that pulpit. Right. So let's go to the book of Acts, chapter three and verse 19, because we got to show you. We got to show you how to how to cover a multitude of your sins, man, because we want to see your name written in the book of life. We want to see our brothers and sisters inherit the kingdom of the most high that's within you, man. Right? We want to see you be obedient to the word of the most high and get crowned, get the crown of life, man. That's what we want to see. Right? So let's go to the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19 and it reads, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Right. So that's another way to blot out your sins. Repent, meaning acknowledge your transgressions and turn away from your evil ways and be converted, meaning be converted back to these laws, statutes and commandments that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Yahweh. Right. So how 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 do you be converted? By turning back to the laws of the, of the uh by the turning back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the most high. That's how you become converted. Right? It ain't just saying, Oh, I went to church, oh now I done converted to a Christian. Oh, oh I went to church, now I done converted to a Jehovah's Witness. No, you gotta repent, meaning you gotta acknowledge your sins, the transgression of the law. You gotta acknowledge that you've been eating abominable foods, you gotta acknowledge that you've been fornicating. You got to acknowledge that you've been a drug abuser, a, a, a womanizer, a whoremonger. You got to acknowledge this stuff. And then you got to turn away from it. Stop doing it. And you convert by going back to the law, statutes, and commandments, meditating on the law day and night, and keeping the covenant that the Most High bestowed upon us, that your sins may be blotted out, meaning deleted. Right? Your sins have been deleted. They, they no longer exist. That's what you want, right? And to prove that, that conversion means turning back to the law. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 19, in the seventh verse. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, in verse 7, and it reads, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High is perfect, and that's what converts the soul, man. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Right? So the law is perfect, converting the soul. That's how you repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. You got to turn back to the laws of the Most High. To hell with what the Christianity uh, teachings are. Oh, the laws are done away with. All you got to do is have faith. No, that's the doctrines of the Nicolaitans that they're going by. And Christ hate that teaching. That lawless doctrine. He hated, man. Right? So, in order to be converted, you must turn back to the laws of the Most High. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Because we used to be simple out here in these streets. Living reckless, man. Living according to the ways of the heathens. Living in a, in a lifestyle of unrighteousness. 
But now we wise because we read the law, statutes and commandments. We apply them to our life. We're no longer fools out here in these streets like the rest of our brothers and sisters. Right. Like the two thirds of our brothers and sisters, the rest of these heathen nations. We, we're not we're not fools like them. Right. Let's go back to the book of Tobit, man. Let's go back to the book of Tobit. All right. And let's get the 14th chapter in the 11th mm -hmm. verse. All right. The book of Tobit, the 14th chapter in the 11th verse. And it reads, wherefore now, my son, consider what alms doeth. So Tobit, you know, he is imparting wisdom to his son. All right. It says, wherefore now, my son, consider what alms doeth. Consider what alms do, man. It blot out a multitude of sins and how righteousness doeth deliver. When he had said these things, he gave up the ghost in the bed, being a hundred and eight and fifty years old, and he buried him honorably. Right. So after imparting his wisdom, you know, Tobit peacefully passed away at the age of one hundred and fifty and he was given an honorable burial. Right. Because he was an honorable man, one that feared the most high and kept the commandments. man. Right. And that got to be the example that that we give to our children man he left his son an inheritance knowledge of the most high man wisdom which is the true riches right wisdom is is worth more than gold man worth more than money so the inheritance that we need to leave to our children is what uh tobit left to tobias man Right. That knowledge, wisdom and understanding of the most high so he could preserve his life and that he could pass down this information to his seed, to 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 his child. Right. And so forth and so on. That's the inheritance that we must leave our children. We don't leave our children nothing, man. We don't leave them no type of knowledge, wisdom and understanding when we when we get put to death on this earth, man. But we, we have to start by giving them knowledge, wisdom and understanding of the scriptures. Like Tobit did Tobias, right? Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, and verse 3. The book of Ecclesiasticus, or Syrac, chapter 12, and verse 3, and it reads, There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. So ain't no goodness, ain't no good coming to you if you are occupied in evil, meaning you always work in wickedness. You're always being wicked. Right. No good is going to come to you, man. Nor to him that giveth no alms. So if you're not feeding the poor, if you're not relieving the poor, no good is going to come to you, man. And that's just what it is. That's why a lot of y'all are stuck in a position in life where nothing good is happening for you. Nothing. Because you ain't giving no alms, man, and you're occupied in evil. Right? Let's jump to the 40th chapter. Ecclesiasticus chapter 40, and let's go to verse 24. And it reads, Brethren are help, so like your brethren, and help are against time of trouble. But alms shall deliver more, uh, more than them both. Right? So brethren and help are against time of trouble. So if you got a strong support system, right? Meaning your brother and your brothers, right? And they and they and they help you in a time of need, right? Are against a time of trouble. They are against that time of trouble, man. You facing all these different afflictions and adversities, but you got a support system. You got brothers that that are able to help you, man. Right? But alms shall deliver more than them both. So alms outweighs that support system that you got with your brethren and the help that they provide in the time of need. When you give alms, hey, it shall deliver than 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 them both. It shall deliver than them both, man. More than them both. So lucky. It shall deliver more than them both. You know what I'm saying? So alms is a powerful weapon, right? Against transgressions arms is a powerful weapon against transgressions and tribulations and, and hardship 
right? If you got a little, give a little. If you got a lot, give a lot. Give according to what the most I have blessed you with. Right? I'm going to get a couple more precepts and I'm going to close out. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 4. Right? And this is when uh, Cornelius um, had the encounter with Peter. Right? Just to give you a little context. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 10 and verse 4. And it reads, And when he looked, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a more memorial before the most high. Because Cornelius, he, he gave alms, man. He feared the most high and, and, and he gave alms. Right. So thy prayers and thy alms are come up before. Um, so like it, the pray the prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before the most high and that's what you want man in the time of need right you want your prayers to be heard and you want your, the remembrance of your alms and all the charity you did to come before the most high and the heavenly father is going to recognize it and he's going to bless you accordingly right let's jump back to ecclesiastic 35 and we'll start at the top going back to the apocrypha Ecclesiastic is 35 in verse 1, and it reads, He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough, and he that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. Right? So a peace offering is also known as a sacrifice of peace offering. It was a spiritual ritual where an individual offered an animal or a grain to the Most High, as an expression of gratitude, devotion, or, or atonement. It was a way to restore and maintain harmony between the worshiper and the Most High, right? The offering also symbolized communion and fellowship, often shared as a meal among the Israelites, right? So he that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. So just by you keeping the commandments, that's you bringing the offering to the Most High. And he that taketh heed to the commandments offereth a peace offering. And that's what you want to do, man. You want to continue to bring in those uh, spiritual burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Most High. Verse 2. He that requiteth a good turn offereth fine flour. And he that giveth alms sacrificeth, sacrificeth praise. Right? So he that requiteth a good turn offereth fine flour. So repaying kindness or showing gratitude is likened to offering fine flour as a sacrifice, man. And, and the most high like to, you know, he like his fine flour, man. He like that. He like that offering, man. Right. So as a similarity, you giving to those that's in need, meaning you giving alms is viewed as an act of praise and worship. Right. And he that giveth alms sacrifice of praise. So by you giving alms, that's you that that's being viewed as an act of praise and worship in the eyes of the most high. And we praise and worship the most high all day, every day. Verse three, to depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord and to forsake unright unrighteousness is a propitiation. Right. Meaning an atonement. So forsaking unrighteousness is seen as an atonement. Or means of seeking favor from the Most High by you forsaking wickedness. That's why he say repent and be converted. Repent means acknowledge your sins and turn away from your evil ways. Verse number four. Thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord. Right? Thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord. So, so this verse is showing you the importance of not coming before the Most High empty handed. Whether it's in the terms of offerings or, or deeds mm -hmm. or having a contrite heart, don't show up before the most high empty handed, man. Right. This this also implies the necessity of bringing something meaningful or sustainable um, when approaching the most high. Right. You, you don't want to show up mm -hmm. empty handed before the Lord, man. Right. That's a big no, no. Right. So give your offerings, your peace offerings, right? 
give your burnt offerings by keeping the commandments by by um giving alms showing the act of praise and worship by doing so um turning away from evil is is making an atonement for your sins man and just don't appear empty before the most high man always have something to give whether it's like i said an offering your deeds or having a contrite heart man when you go off right a, a remorseful um repentant heart right so uh let's get one more precept and i'm gonna close out this is the book of matthew the sixth chapter and we're gonna start at the first verse let's go to matthew saint matthew chapter six and verse one and it reads take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them right so sometimes this precept can be a stumbling block to brothers right they feel as if they can't do they they arms in front of nobody right it say take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them right so if your heart is trying to impress men by doing arms in front of them hey that's not a good thing right but if you just so happen to be doing arms out the pureness of your heart with with the most high on your mind you're not worried about man and, and they actually see you giving alms that there's nothing wrong with that right there's nothing wrong with freely giving alms to please the most high in the in in the sight of man right but if you giving alms to be seen of man your heart not in the right place right your heart is not in the right place if you give it alms to be seen of men. Oh, look what I did. You're trying to get praise from man. That's off, man. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. You get no reward for that. Verse two. Therefore, when thou doest thy alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. So we're not trying to get no glory from man. We're trying to get the glory from the most high. Cause that's the reason why we're doing it. That's who we're doing it for. We're not making a spectacle when we give alms, man. When we do charitable works. We're not, we're not making a spectacle out of it. Because there's no reward for that. He say, verily I say, say unto you, they have their reward, right? So they're going to get what's coming to them, man. You want to be seen of man? You want glory of man? Well, I'm finna give it to you, right? Verse three, but when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand nor thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Right. So when you do your arms, don't don't be on. Don't have a camera out. Right. For YouTube views so you can get comments in the comment session uh, in the comment section, getting praise from men like they do on YouTube, man. People be walking around giving arms and making a spectacle out of it. No, don't do that. Do it in secret. Right. Don't nobody. You ain't got to broadcast. Oh, I'm finna give arms today. Right. You you don't have to do all that. Right. It say that thy arms may be in secret and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Right. So be quiet about it. And the most high going to reward you openly. So give arms, man. It'll, it'll cover a multitude of sins. Try to, you know, intertwine that with your walk kind of heavy, man, because we need that atonement. We need that. Um. We need that that sin blotted out. We need we need those sins blotted out, man. Right? And with that, I like to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, Amanawal, Barakata. It's H O Y Las Vegas. It's H O Y to the Chariots Fly. Shalom Yasharallah.